we're going to take a look at how we can use the Pythagorean theorem to tell whether a triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. So if we take this shape, and if we assume it's a right triangle, it has a right angle in it, we would like to think about what would happen if the hypotenuse got bigger. If the hypotenuse got bigger, it would grow like this. Oh, that's not a very straight line. Let me try that again. And by getting bigger, if we had to use the same vertex or the point where the two legs meet right here, what would happen? Well, if we connected from there to there and there to there, what kind of an angle would we now have here? When the hypotenuse gets bigger, it now has an obtuse angle. So when c squared is bigger, it's going to give us an obtuse angle. And the opposite is going to be true. Oops, I erased too much there. So let's pretend we are going to make our hypotenuse smaller. So just make it this big. What's going to happen there, you can probably guess, is we're going to have all of a sudden an acute angle. So this green angle here is suddenly acute. So if c squared is smaller, we're going to have acute. And we can think of it that way. So when we have a right triangle, c squared is equal to the other side, then it's going to be a right triangle. Now, we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem and see how to apply that. So the Pythagorean theorem says when a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know it's a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. In order to test it, we want to remember which one c squared. c squared is the one always across from the right angle, this one. I'll give it a number here, 10 and 4. Oh, let's do 8. So we're going to test and see if this triangle is a right triangle or obtuse or acute. So we're going to always leave the number by itself that's across from the right angle. The two legs that form the right triangle are the A and the B in any order. So what we have then is 10 squared plus 8 squared equals 15 squared. And we can test this to see, is the c squared bigger or smaller, or is it the same? So we're going to calculate this, 100 plus 64 equals 225. 164 equals 225. When analyzing this, the c squared is bigger than the other side. It's a larger number that is going to mean that we have an obtuse triangle. It's not a right triangle. And oftentimes they're going to give us this without a picture. So let's say 11, 8, and 12. Is it going to be acute, obtuse, or right? So the hypotenuse is also always the longest leg. So if we don't have a picture, we know it's the biggest number. So we'll say 11 squared plus 8 squared equals 12 squared. 121 plus 64 equals 144. 185 equals 144. So again, we're going to focus on the c squared. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the legs making the right triangle equal the hypotenuse squared. Is the c squared bigger or smaller than the other side? So c squared here is smaller. It's going to be an acute triangle. And so finally, we have when they're equal. So let's draw a picture on this one and do a 3, 4, 5. Our hypotenuse is across from what looks like the right angle. It's the biggest number. 
3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So 9 plus 16 equals 25. 25 equals 25. So again, I focus on the c squared. And so c squared is equal to the other side. That means it's going to be a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem works with right triangles. Now, sometimes they'll write that as an inequality. Let's look at how they write that and then we will um, do another example or two if you'd like. So they would write if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's going to be a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared has the greater sign facing, that means we're saying here a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, it means c squared is bigger. So we could read it this way, c squared, and that's open, c squared is bigger than the other side. It's going to be obtuse. And then if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it would mean c squared is smaller. So again, we could read it this way, c squared is facing the little pointed part, which means less than, c squared is less than, it's going to make it acute. That's one way teachers teach it. Uh, I prefer to just remember if it's c squared is bigger, it's obtuse, the bigger angles are obtuse. c squared is smaller, it's acute, because the smaller than 90 angles are acute. So let's try one or two examples. You can pause it. How would you set it up? So this is our c squared. So that's the one that goes alone. 5 squared means 5 times 5. 8 squared means 8 times 8. And 10 squared means 10 times 10. When I add those, I get 89. So let's take a look. Is c squared bigger or smaller? c squared's bigger. It's going to be obtuse. Let's try another one. Eight squared plus 13 squared. Oops. Well, let's do this. What did I do wrong here? It's always good to go and critically think when you make a mistake. I didn't put the biggest one or the one across from what looks like 90 by itself. So I'm going to fix that. And we multiply 64 plus 81 equals 169. Uh, that's 125, and it just so happens again to be obtuse. If c squared is bigger, it's obtuse, and if c squared is smaller, it would have been acute, and if both sides are equal, it is right. So hopefully that helps you understand the idea.